fetching video stream. All right, says we're live, pal. Know what that says NXT level performance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a whole nother. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> that's a that's a whole nother um, funny story about the fact that that shares its name with a with a wrestling promotion. It's technically next level, but. Anyway, let's see. So what I'm trying to do. You are hearing the time lag. Um which I was just thinking, I wonder if I cast it up here, if the TV is going to, if it's got built-in volume or not. Figure it out. You wouldn't think so, because it would hit the mics, and then it would yeah. be like, probably just a visual. By the way, so Tim is actually, his nickname is T.O., so if you hear him called that, just don't get confused. <laughs> I look for Terrell Owens when you say that. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. You can't say T.O. around me. Uh-oh. We might be button heads a little bit then. Don't tell me he's like an Eagles fan or a Redskins fan. I don't know what. I saw that Kentucky hat. That's a good thing. That's a good sign. I don't know if he's even really into football at all, to be honest. Um, but well, we're gonna start at ten, regardless. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That'd been a good sound bite to get put in here as Randy Savage and his Macho Man Slim Jim. Or Jay Lethal <laughs> playing Randy Savage. He's fun to watch on Being the Elite, the early episodes. Uh, Jay Lethal. I wish they would have just kept him on it. I'm but sure the time's coming where he's going to have to choose AEW or, or WWE. I mean, you would think. He'd have a better... Probably a better <coughs> career with AEW just because of the relationships and and whatnot there. More than likely, um, but otherwise he's gonna end up on NXT and yeah, maybe even on a mid card start off. Could you imagine him versus Velveteen Dream though? Like the, the, the promos that, that they cut against <coughs> each that, other. That would be hilarious. Also depends on how they, you bring him <coughs> in, like gimmick-wise. Like what gimmick does he come in as? Does he come in as heel or, or face? And Jay Lethal, you mean? Yeah. Well, I think he's a heel now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you, it depends on how you bring him in. Talking about Jay Lethal and if he needs to make the jump to either AEW or WWE. I don't think he'll ever go to WWE. I think he would have went by now. 
Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if he does, he goes to NXT, he goes mid card. But I was telling him, could you imagine like him and Velveteen Dream and the promos and the yeah. the the things that they could cut? But I was like, it also depends. I think you're gonna see more of that though. I think you're gonna see guys working lighter schedule, like what Bowler's done. I think there's gonna right. be a lot of guys that don't get cut. <laughs> you're just barely on camera. It's hilarious. I don't like seeing my face. I, I, I was gonna cast this up here, but I don't know if. Cast it and you won't be able to see my face at all. I'll make sure I'm definitely covered up. <laughs> I know we're going for the female demo, so. <laughs> there it is. It worked. Perfect. I'm like, fro- oh, there we go. I was like, I'm frozen. You can't even get any Kentucky hate from people because you can hardly see it's a Kentucky beanie. There, no, there's no Kentucky hate here. You can, Kentucky guy? I'm a Kentucky guy. There you go. My wife's from Kentucky. Good. Common ground. All right. It's 10 o'clock. Let's get rolling. Let's do it. Counted down the weeks and the days, and we are finally here. Welcome to the inaugural edition of the Going Broadway podcast. I am Alex. With me every week is Cole and T.O. Guys, how we doing? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Not Try, too, not trying too to shabby. position my shirt to where it just says Iron Mike, and people might think it says Sharp Iron Mike. Mike Sharp? Sharp. Yes. <laughs> the father of Ted DiBiase. Who could oh, forget? <laughs> Thanks for everyone that is currently joining us and that will be listening to this later. Um, I'll give you information later on how you can access this podcast once we are finished recording. For now, I um, thought we would take a little bit and just kind of introduce ourselves and give you a little bit about uh, about our background and just how we got into wrestling, why we still watch it, in some cases why we've considered stop watching it. Um, what we like about it, what we don't like about it. So, um, let's see. To you, I'll give the floor to you first. I ask myself the question: Why I watch wrestling a lot still? Um, happens about every Monday, every Wednesday. Did you watch it last Friday. night? Friday, I did, and I come with a reason: as I have three children, mm-hmm. and it's it's an escape from the <clears throat> children and my wife. That's in three hours and two hour intervals, three nights a week. But I, it's, I mean, there's just some stuff that's just unwatchable. Well, I was telling Cole before we went on that um, it's like their main guys, even like the guys that they push as their what's supposed to be their. I don't want to say their main event guys, but you know, you're so Styles and Orton have a program right now. You've got um, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe against Rollins and. Oh, the Authors big, of Pain. The big Show came, big back, show came last back last night. night. Yeah, yeah. Um, year old Big Show. Heel turn is in, imminent. I um, thought he was gonna, right. It's so bad. <clears throat> I thought he was going to turn last night. I thought he was going to turn immediately. Every program with the Big Show starts with <laughs> he'll turn at this point, right? Like, <laughs> well, there's a video out there that actually goes through how many times he's turned face and heel in his entire career. I mean, it's literally like in the 40s. Yeah. It's, it's just insane. But anyway. The entire, at least for Raw, in my opinion, is just so unwatchable that it, it's it, it boggles my mind that they still have the ratings, albeit not great ratings, but that they still have the ratings that they do have. I, it's funny because you ask you ask the question, it's like who watches this? Who 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 is the show aimed at? Who's the show for? It's it's not for a 30 to 40 year old man. No, no. It, but at the same time, it, it's not for, you know, I have, I have daughters that they'll sit down and they'll try to watch it. It's not for them. They're, they're six years old, seven years old to where I was watching it when I was six and seven years old. Right. You know, like I, 
it you know it was the the dumb da- the the cartoon era pretty yeah. much it's not simplified enough for them right now so it's Who's watching it? Teenage teenage boys sure as shit aren't watching it like we did when we were in the you know the Attitude Era in the nineties. Right. PG. The, yeah, so I I don't know. I mean, like, is it is it eight to twelve year olds and they're just the parents are getting roped in because the kids are watching it, or do well, they simply just not care because of all the money from the TV deals and the Saudis, which that could get interesting. I mean, yeah. I I feel like actually they're targeting like they're trying to target that like eighteen to thirty range. Because I'd even noticed that they were talking about SmackDown's ratings and how the, that age demographic was up here recently. Mm-hmm. They are also talking about how they're trying to go back to a more rated, almost R kind of yeah. storyline and, and, and program, which is why they're probably targeting that age, uh, which is why you probably see the, the Lashley Lana storyline with Rusev, which is well, what, what's ridiculous. Funny ab- but What's funny about that is, is like they're saying that they're, the, they're more... <laughs> Everything I, I uh, the other podcasts I listen to and what I read, it's the online views, it's the YouTube views. Yeah. It's that's that. what we were talking about before it's we so, started. It's is so that, bizarre. Is that even though that that's the worst part of the show in terms of um, just viewing it content wise, that's what's getting the most YouTube vi- YouTube hits, and it's and it I don't know it. I don't trust any of that though. I, I the the online shit can be manipulated BG. so much. BG, BG. Online stuff can be manipulated so much. I, I agree, and I'm, that's that's what concerns me. Is it like, all right, yeah? Are they, are they buying views? Are they doing this? I, I I don't know. They they try to shove stuff down your throat so often that it's 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 definitely debatable that they are somehow padding their their viewer numbers. I mean, especially I mean, if you go any. Any social media platform, you see comments that people absolutely hate this. Mm-hmm. I mean, right? You know, people that are watching it in real time or after it goes off the air, people are just they hate it, and myself included. I, I think the whole show is. They're trying awful. to make the spin though that she's getting death threats and he's getting death threats, and it's just like they can spin it however really? they want. Nah. It's still it's yeah. still awful. People know it's. it's I think storyline. I think she's actually acting. To be a bad actress, there's no way she's as bad as well, the way she's acting. She's, she's not an actual actress. Yeah, like, I know. She's been in movies. There's no way she's this horrible of an actress. No, she's not. I mean, she just um, and I forgot the name of the movie, um, but she just recently did one, and Rusev was actually in it. But if you watch the trailer, it actually looks like a good movie. I've actually considered, um, you know, sitting down and watching it. Mm-hmm. Ask ask my wife, hey, this looks like, this looks like a good movie. Let's watch it. And I just haven't got got to that point yet. But uh, yeah, I hundred percent agree. And she had roles in like Pitch Perfect. Like I mean, like yeah, she, you, there's no way you get speaking roles in Hollywood movies and be as non talented as she portrays herself in the storyline. Right, it's bizarre. Of course. I, it, but here's the other thing: you got to look at it from if who if they are trying to target that audience. What is that audience interested in? They like a good breakup story. Mm-hmm. They're they're into reality TV. They're looking for the the drama, which is why I feel like those YouTube videos that get all those hits are also yeah. popular because they're just highlighting that part that might catch someone who's not a wrestling fan and be like, oh, that looks like something I would watch. Where like an OG wrestling fan like one of us would be like, okay, this this is crap. Like you know, we don't really want to watch this. This is not what we signed up and for. It's, it's- Probably just a generational thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, just yeah. the, the the generational fan of you know when oh. we when we were younger, the people that you know pushed back against the Attitude Era so much compared to the the NWA wrestling fan or you know the WCW wrestling fan of the traditional wrestling. I guess is a good way to maybe put it. Yeah, the, the storyline would never get over you know twenty years ago. You know what I mean? Like it just wouldn't have. Yeah, it's <laughs> bad. Um, so. Yeah, Obvious. that's kind of how I became a wrestling fan. I mean, I grew up on it, watched it. You know, we kind of went down a different track when we, you know, as we probably will a lot with me being on here. But uh, yeah, yeah, I grew up watching it. Brother watched it. Family watched it. It was just kind of part of my childhood and continued on. And it's one of those things that uh, you just don't want to let go of. But it it's really hard. So when when you started watching it, who were the big names at that point? Like, are we talking whenever? Yeah, you, know, you had Flair and the Horsemen, or was Flair, there a Flair, Sting, the Horsemen? Then you know, 
Andre Hogan, you know, you know late eighties. Late eighties. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, what has happened? And this is a rhetorical question, but what has happened in the last thirty ish years that it is just? I mean, it's had its ups and downs. Um, most people I know were into the Attitude Era. To be honest, I actually wasn't. I mean, I didn't enjoy the Attitude Era. I actually stopped. I stopped watching in. Um, 93, 94, probably, at least watching on a regular basis. Um, well, maybe 95. And then I kind of picked it back up whenever, you know, NWO got, got hot and that was like the big thing. Right. Um, but it just kind of makes you wonder if with all the ups and downs in the last 34 years, you can even go further that whenever professional wrestling was, you know, first hit TV in the, 60s and 70s albeit you know it was ter- territorial but it makes you wonder if we are in a as far as like the roller coaster of content so to speak and it being watchable if we're just on the low end and it's going to pick back up um, because there's a lot of content out there now that's another thing we were talking about before we went on is even compared to a year ago there is a ton more content with right. the resurgence of NWA um, you can get um, NJPW World. Um, there's, there's there's never been as many options for a wrestling fan as there is right now to watch. Right, right? it's there. It's just, do people know about it? Do because right. because because I think there there's there's stuff there for every type of fan. It's just a matter of finding it, getting access to it, or or did did WWE simply just ruin wrestling for a certain amount of people, right. and they just gave up on it? My earliest memories of actually watching it. By the way, for those of you watching on Facebook, it looks like we're popping in and out for whatever reason. Um, we're working to see what's going on, so stay with us. Um, anyway, so I started watching, you know, late '80s as well, um, and it, my earliest memories were the same. You know, Flair, Horseman, um, Hogan, Andre, but. If you wanted to see those guys, you had to get the pay per views because this was when um, you know you had the occasional appearance on TV, but they didn't wrestle. Right. Um, you know your your biggest guys on TV at the time were you know you had you know Ted DiBiase or whoever, but they would wrestle jobbers. Um, and I would always go. So this is. Probably late '90s is whenever I, you know, had my mem- like constant memories of just being able to like watch on TV and getting the pay per views. I would also go to the store whenever, uh, go to the video rental yeah. place whenever we had those. Go back and get all of the old pay per views that were, you know, whenever I was like a year or two older, even before I was born. In the case of you know the earlier Starcades and the earlier WrestleManias and and everything like that. And then you got to eventually, kind of like you mentioned, the cartoon era of the mid-90s. That's when I kind of stopped watching. And then, um, you know, people at school were just like, hey, you got to you gotta watch this. You know, there's this NWO thing. Hogan jumped on board. He's a bad guy now. You got you to gotta check it out. So, so I did, and it, and it was cool uh, for a couple years. And then... Once that died off, um, with the res- with the resurgence of the Attitude Era era in WWF at the time, that's actually when I stopped watching it again. Um, just you know, it didn't really it, it it didn't interest me. I'm kind of a wrestling purist. I appreciate the athleticism and the actual wrestling more than I do storylines. Although that is definitely part of it. I'm not disputing that. Um, but then fast forward a little bit. Um, you know, I followed it you know, kind of just throughout the years off and on, didn't really watch it a whole lot, but you know, your guys like John Cena, Batista, et cetera, I know who they are, Randy Orton. Um yeah, and then, that, that's the period when I quit. Like when I when I hit yeah. nineteen, twenty years old, I, I there was a good ten year phase where I just did not watch any of it. Yeah. And, I, yeah, hundred percent. I mean yeah. I didn't I didn't really watch any of it at all. I would just get, kind of follow you know, could follow it online. It was right. easy to exactly work and exactly keep up with storylines, who was who. But yeah, I mean, I was. Um, and then I would say, you know, fast forward to about uh, 
2000, 2016, maybe. Whenever the the indie craze started, as far as, you know, um, these guys that were with New Japan, Ring of Honor, they would do Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, all these, these indie promotions. You right. know, this is whenever you had Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and Bullet Club and all this stuff, you know, it started to feel like it was the new version of NWO and just like the cool factor or whatever, you know, that kind of got me back to watching it some, but not, not a ton. Right. But this is also when you couldn't access it a whole lot. Um, aside from, you know, fan videos that would be put on YouTube and things like that. Right. Um, and then I would say probably within the last, I don't know, year, give or take is when I've actually purposefully, um, was that due to AEW? Was that lot, something that gave, I mean, it was almost like a lot of it gave you hope. A lot of it was. I mean, just because it's it's something new. It's an alternative to WWE. It's kind of a flashback to the Monday Night Wars, except it's Wednesday night with AEW against NXT. Um, NXT, I'm not gonna lie, definitely helped with bringing me back to actually watching it. Right. Um, you know, again, when I'm able to, I've got two kids of my own as well, so it kind of makes it um, makes it hard to catch every single makes it hard to catch every single episode of any one product, much less everything that's out there now. It's impossible to watch just what WWE puts out. It's Mm -hmm. impossible to keep track of all that. Well, and to their credit, that's why they've got the network and they archive everything. Um, You know, for people that can't necessarily DVR, they can just, hey, I didn't catch NXT this this Mm -hmm. Wednesday. I can catch it. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's available the very next day, but Friday by Friday for sure. Right. Um, so that's kind of what kind of where I'm at with pro wrestling again AEW the resurgence of you know a new brand um plus you know even with all these guys making their exodus from New Japan and Ring of Honor to form AEW um New Japan's still good if um for those of you watching or listening right now or at a later date if you've not watched any of Wrestle Kingdom do yourself a favor and at least watch um osprey and takahashi that match was phenomenal um ibushi and uh, okada was good um just the whole event was you know from what i've heard is really good i've only watched those two matches um even ring of honor i've heard is good too i've not seen a, a ton of content lately but i've heard people enjoy it uh people that go to the live events people enjoy just the small independent feel of it yeah um so let me ask a question you you, br- you bring up osprey he he goes to wwe what's what's his ceiling with a company like that or not a company like that what's his ceiling with that company sadly it's and it's nxt i i don't i don't see someone like him getting over they wwe right now likes to kill guys like him you know you, you, you like a two oh five. Like look at all the talent they've just thrown into like the i mean they're just stuff. now getting guys like uh Korea, you know, Korea or, or uh, um, I'm trying to think of his name, uh, Alexander, uh, Cedric, Cedric Alexander. Cedric, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they're just now giving those guys like mid card chances, and then they have like a promo here, and then they're cut from TV. You know, Buddy Murphy is probably one of their most talented people, yeah. having these these blockbuster matches with Aleister Black, mm-hmm. taking the L in every single one of them. Yep. But like, where's the title shot? You and know the thing I mean? is, is they they. They kind of took away from him having him be this two oh five live guy and this, you know, how many times can you see someone get beat and trot out there in a match that nobody is not promoted, but and then be able to take him serious, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, without a gimmick change, without a, and, you know, to Heyman's credit, I guess Heyman, you know, one of, one of his big initiatives was to push Black, to push Murphy, uh, Mustafa Ali. There, there was a handful of guys, right? But it's still they they, what have they been elevated well, to? Here, here's the thing: in, in ten years, that's going to be the, the the average size of a wrestler. Yep. Uh, I mean, like, look at like these big guys are are falling off the map. You, you know, there's not many like big, you know. And, I mean, Braun Strowman's there, but like, there's not many like John Cena type builds, Randy Orton types. But you're looking at like Adam Cole being the face. You know well, I mean? and and the thing is, is UFC. If you look at UFC, what's happened with UFC is your your most marketed guys 
and people that look at like, all right, that that's a legit tough guy right there. Right. Is, you know, Conor McGregor at 155 pounds. John Jones, who people view as the, you know, probably the greatest mixed martial artist, toughest guy right now. He weighs 205 pounds. That's what he fights at. He right. walks around at about 230, but they're not these huge 300 pound guys that are right. six foot six. So it's, they're still caught, like you said, they're caught up in this big guy, yoke guy. Like, I mean, that's what Vince McMahon likes. There's so. a handful of them. McMahon is a big guy kind of guy. It's it's strange. So how do you get away from like? And I think making the 205 division kind of crippled a lot of the wrestlers because it just it pigeonholed them into something to where you look at Adam Cole. He doesn't weigh 205 pounds. Seth Rollins probably weighs a little over 205 pounds. So. The way they classified these guys, yet not other guys. Finn Balor probably doesn't weigh much over 205. So He's in the 190s, I think. Yeah, so it shows there's guys that, that can get over not being that big. But, you know, you have you know your two champs right now, Lesnar and Wyatt, bigger guys. Is it believable that those two – I mean, especially Brock Lesnar, like what's believable? You have Cain Velasquez come out who destroyed him in a, in a real MMA fight, but – their bodies are two completely different looking bodies for yep. wrestling, and it doesn't it doesn't look believable that right. Velasquez could beat him in a wrestling match. So it's kind of a a weird dynamic. I feel like you've got these wrestling fans out there that are one of two things: one that are the ones that you know have been around for the last ten years, give or take, that are just so I don't want to say desensitized, but they're just used to the WWE product. You know, it is what it is, kind of thing. And then you've got people like me that realize, hey, you know, there are a lot of guys out there that can have these five, six star or seven star matches. And most of these guys aren't even breaking 230 pounds. And so part of kind of um, tying that into what you're mentioning earlier is the reason I feel like 205 Live isn't getting over is because you've got guys that are in that similar weight class that are in NXT having the same kind of great matches. So yeah. it's like guys like me that have already associated NXT with good matches, that's why they don't check out 205 Live because they're getting their fix with NXT. Or, or why why isn't that guy in NXT challenging for the belt? Why is he over here on this 205 Live? Like it, It's almost like a minor league of mm-hmm. you know, because I don't think you look at two or at NXT as the minor league of WWE anymore. You I can't. think that perception shifted <clears throat> completely, especially last, since Survivor Series. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. The last six months, that whole perception. Well, and, changed. You, and you've got guys that are even saying, you know, you got Champa saying that, you know, hey, I'm never leaving NXT. If they ask me to leave NXT, then I'm just gonna quit wrestling and just be a producer. Yep. Like they feel the 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 talent feel that strongly about it. Well, the product's completely different than anything else, though, that WWE puts out. So mm-hmm. why would you want to leave the one product where? You, you're actually getting to do the kind of product you want to do. Well, if you're if you're a top guy in NXT, I don't know what they're making off their T-shirts. I don't know, you know, take money aside. What have they done with anyone from NXT? You look at Aleister Black. They, like these guys that they they've called up that have been top top people in the promotion. They've just butchered what they what they've their it, their storylines it's it's, it's 60 mm-hmm. 40 in my opinion I, I think like like 60 percent of the people that come up that you they get thrown away yep. you know, like like ec3 gets called up and because he did this or did that behind the scenes like you don't even know where he's at like he's not even relevant you know he had a yeah. couple squash matches where he got destroyed and then he's gone you know he's he's off tv yeah it's it's so we're i'm trying i'm trying to think who else i mean you had balor who came i mean Owens came up, Zayn came up. The guys that had a Nakamura. Oh, you've got a ton of guys. I mean, you've got um, they get the big put. Like some of those guys get the big push as soon as they come right up. away. But like right now, like 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 Ricochet seems lost in the mix now. Yep. And I'm like, dude, the dude is probably my favorite wrestler on TV right now. And, and you know, I just I I watched him on Lucha and 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 in other places too. But like, the dude's legit, and and they push him as like like the crowd favorite, but. I mean, what he's coming out to Carrillo's aid. I mean, like what, yeah. like he was just United States champion, putting a program on with AJ Styles, one of the greatest. Mm-hmm. And now you're you're out here saving people, you know, like. And part of that falls on the creative and the writing. I he's, mean, he's it, not Hurricane just, Helms, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he, he, yeah. he's not a superhero. I know that's like the gimmick they want to push, but like, the dude's more talented than than probably ninety percent of the roster. I'd say probably ninety eight percent of the but roster. It, but, it, but it becomes one of those things like that. Like 
he doesn't belong in WWE. He belongs in AEW. Right. I, I mean, I think it was smart on him. He he's done a lot. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's been around. You, you get look at guys like AJ Styles. AJ Styles could have went to AEW, yes, but where he's at in his career, he's already been saying it. You know, I'm, I know I'm coming to the day where I'm gonna have to retire. You know, going to AEW, he'd be smarter going to AEW to really put over other people and mm-hmm. to really help that organization be a name that can help that organization take off. Um, but where he's at in his career, you know, he's he still has some championship runs in him. You know, but if you go to AEW, you're not close to those guys who are just at the prime mm-hmm. of their. Mm-hmm. WWE has, you know, that's why AJ Styles is doing a program with Randy Orton <laughs> because yeah. he doesn't have to be the the high energy, high flying. That that's a, a slower, slower match. match yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's 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 insane that you know if you go back and I mean even what was it three years ago whenever AJ was in New Japan, like he had a lot more of an aerial move set than he does now i mean his well you oh, he's to. totally reinvented the way he wrote i mean yeah but when you're in new japan you have to well, it, oh for sure he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to go to, to new japan and and not have an aerial set right but what i'm saying now is that besides that flying forearm that he does which i think is dumb that they gave him that as a finisher he should have just stuck with the styles clash um he doesn't do a whole lot of aerial things anymore and i think it's just just because of his age right um but uh, that's something that we'll probably talk about later in the show is just, you know, kind of spitballing AEW versus WWE. Who do you think should go, you know, if they're in WWE, do you think they should go elsewhere? If they're in AEW or New Japan, do you think they should go somewhere else? But um, so we're at about 25, 26 minutes right now. So Cole, why don't you give us your your background on professional wrestling so I'm a, I'm a little bit younger than both of you you know so i i grew up watching like the very end of what would have been wwf mm-hmm. and then kind of transitioned into what wwe and so uh I, you know i grew up watching you know undertaker and and stone cold steve austin the rock you know mm-hmm. like those were guys that i got to watch but i didn't really get into the product till it was wwe yeah so you know I, and I grew up at a time where there wasn't anything. The biggest competitor to WWE when I watched was was you know NWA, uh, TNA, you know, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that at all. Promotion at all, you know what I mean? Like what whatever that was at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up watching when Impact was the number one thing, and I watched both. You know, like similar to how people watch AEW and WWE right now. I was watching, you know, TNA and and there and, yeah, there was a time where Impact was kind of like what NXT is today to some degree. Uh, and not just that, I mean, Impact was taking off a lot more than I think people gave it credit for until it got ruined, you know. Um, so I grew up watching that. And so, like, I, I, you know, I'm a WWE guy at heart. I grew up watching at a time when WWE was the only product. You either loved it or you hated it. Like, there was no, you, you, you almost couldn't, if you wanted to watch wrestling, you almost couldn't hate it, you know what I mean? Because there was nothing else for you to really watch. Um, as a kid, you know what I mean. Well, like, is that is that when TNA was doing like the weekly pay per views or the internet pay per view thing? Or yeah, not? I mean it was more like they they couldn't find a stable place to 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 be on TV. You know, they kept bouncing around to different mm-hmm. things, and I stopped watching it when they got to a channel that wasn't normally on any basic cable, cable package. Yeah. And so, you know, I I mean I started watching it was showing up on local news channels. You know, like Channel Eleven mm-hmm. would play it or Channel Ten. And you would you would watch you know it was probably a rerun of something that happened yeah. two or three weeks ago, um, but I grew up watching at that time when WWE was like the only product. Mm-hmm. So you know I I absolutely love John Cena. I think they overpowered him at some point and made it to where he was almost too beatable because uh, he was always put over like he, they always make it look like he wasn't going to win and then he'd win, you know every single time. Uh, you know Batista, Rey Mysterio when, when he he came in, um, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit. So that, yeah. You know, I mean, like I grew up at a even even the crappy ECW that we got from them was still cool to me <laughs> because I didn't get ECW when yeah. when I you know I missed out on that. You know what I mean? So I got like 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 old rusty Sandman and Sabu and you know, yeah. but like it, it, the nostalgia for me. And then you got guys like CM Punk out of that, you know. And it, so so I and I got to watch you know CM Punk and. And, and there was some great storylines. The, the one thing I always re- remember in my mind is that that a clip you and I watch it every time it shows up on my news feed is where it starts with like Stone Cold and the Rock in the ring and then another guy comes down and another guy comes mm-hmm. down and they're all hitting their finishing moves on people. And there's like 20 guys out there and then it ends with Stone Cold stunning someone at the end. <laughs> 
But like, you go back and look at the clip, and every single person that ran down that ramp is like a, a, a all time great now. Mm -hmm. Like every single one. I mean, even like Booker T at the time was was probably lower middle card. Yeah. You know, but now he's he's a great. So you look at that and you're like, okay, that's great. And now I look at the product and I was like, we don't have stars like that anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the WWE does not build stars like they used to. They don't mm -hmm. know how to. It's like it's like they forgot how to, but it's the 50-50 booking. I well, because the they, they can't get anybody completely over. I mean, John Cena. If you think about it, John Cena, was the last person that I mean, I guess CM Punk actually would have been like the last person they really got like over. I mean, Daniel Bryan had a little craze. But, like, for the most part, like, the craze was CM Punk. That's the yeah. last guy. And that's, what, almost five years ago now? But it's also, how, look how it ended. They don't mm -hmm. they don't want to empower a wrestler so much to where they become bigger than the product. Well, because they lose them. Because yep. John Cena's gone. They don't the like Rock what, left. That's what I was going to say. They don't like what happened with The Rock. They don't like what happened with, you know, with Cena now. They, like, they don't. They don't want that to happen. They And they feel they don't need it because right now their business has never been better, which... And there's still plenty it's of talent. shocking. There's yeah, which plenty. is insane. But the reason it is is because of the Saudi contract. I mean, that's what it boils down to: is the con yeah, the ten year contract. Away, if that, I mean, that could really go away. With it, well, right now. it 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 could go away, but not without any kind of like legal stuff going on. I mean, it just what wrestler would go over there right now? Who would go over there right what, now? What wrestler would with what just happened? And you know, the 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 guy that was murdered is. Uh, Oh, the one cat that's behind all of it that did the deal. It's, it was his best friend. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I just don't. I It'll be interesting to see how that's treated. Well, I'm sure WWE will figure out something with their almost bottomless pockets and decide, hey, we want to we want to send Triple H and Shawn Michaels over there and Undertaker and pay them three million dollars each because hey we can we can do that. Not just that. I mean, you also got to do. They want us there now. That's <laughs> that's kind of my thing. You know, like, like I, I they, wonder if that deal. I wonder if that deal is something that they care to do. If they're, I mean, there's already a ninety thousand problems with that deal. Like they've already had so many complications where it's like you know at some point you're just like call it quits. You know, yeah. what I mean, like I it's, it's better to lose <laughs> the money and and be done with it than to. to well, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, just with the issue of the what really happened with that, the the, the flight coming back, yeah. and you know, no one will ever know. But I mean, you've got you got people like Carl Anderson and you know his wife going on Twitter and saying, you know, basically making it sound like they were held hostage. And then you have to ha have people like AJ or um, Rollins. I forgot who basically said, no, we were never in any danger. Blah blah blah. And it's like. You know, where's where's the line of saying, yes, it made our company millions of dollars, but our millions of dollars depend on our talent. Right. And I mean, they've proven over the years they don't care about their talent. It's about the money at the end of the day. What's that, crazy that's is the one th thing. those shows are <coughs> technically like optional. You know, what I mean, like they tell everybody, hey, this right. show's optional. Right. But then if you don't go, like... They've de-pushed people over not going. Right, because now it's like, oh, where's your loyalty, though? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, because this guy went, you know, now we're going to push him or we're going to... I mean, those shows are usually, like, mediocre at best. Like, that's why they bring guys like Tyson Fury mm -hmm. over. or and, and usually, if you notice, the guys that come and do those special matches are not, like, big U.S. guys either. You know, Tyson Fury's mm -hmm. not a U.S. guy. No. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, it's people that would not be almost non-confrontational. Yep. I mean, they literally pull out Monsoon... Or, you know, for that, like, that one-time match a year yep. for that. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, but, yeah, like, I, I grew up watching the product at a time when there was nothing else. There's nothing else to choose from, yeah. And, and I loved it. You know, don't get me wrong. I grew up on a product that I loved. You know, we, we got Fortune, you know, uh, an Impact at the time. We also got um, um, Evolution uh, out of that, which was great. And, and there has been some great, you know, factions and things that have, Happened over that time. Kurt Angle going to, to Impact was really cool to watch. Um, so, yeah, there, there was still some cool cool things, but, like, now I feel like even what I watched is starting to kind of change. And I'm not against it. Like, I like it, but I wish we would just get consistent. Like, WWE needs to pick what what lane. It's like every week they're trying to find a lane to go down, and they just can't seem to commit. Well, and, and they have the capability to have three different lanes. They have three different shows. Mm -hmm. They could They could make it three different products if they wanted to they could cater to whatever wrestling fan and genre they genre they need to but 
They just can't seem to. It, it figure goes it back out. to ratings, though, because they want every show to have the same ratings, right? Or 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 great ratings. Well, and that's that's my thing with AEW. Like they talk about the the, the Wednesday Night Wars. Like WWE or WWE can just end that if they choose to. If they really oh. want to, they could just just start sending over they whatever already talent they wanted to. They already have and promote it, and then all of a sudden it's it's going to be a wash. Mm-hmm. And like NXT is already without bringing over every major guy. They're already putting AEW down in ratings. You know, NXT is doing well. Um, but the thing is, they might lose their more loyal NXT fan if they start doing that. I don't know. See, here's the thing. If you notice, like, almost any gimmick possible the man gets over in NXT. Mm-hmm. They're just behind it. it, it it's just a they're thing. Loyal they're loyalists is what you're saying. They're, they're you know, loyal because half product. of those guys, you know, no way Jose goes up to the main roster. He's probably, like, the whole crowd's getting lit when, when they're, they're mm-hmm. sitting there at, at NXT. And then he goes to the main roster, and he's literally... Not to mention he was a remake of uh, uh, what's his name? I couldn't tell his name. Uh, Adam, Adam Rose. Yeah. Uh, I mean, lit- <laughs> like, like literally took the same gimmick three weeks later after Adam Rose leaves the company and says, "Okay, you're gonna do what the he did." The great thing now. is, like, who backstage is so high on that gimmick that they just needed to redo it after Adam Rose. Li- I mean, like two weeks. I mean, yeah. I mean, literally, it was like we had an Adam Rose on the main roster, and it was like we need one of these on NXT. So they do No Way Jose, and then it's like, okay, now we need now he's gone. We got to have this on the main roster, and I'm like, are you so convinced that WWE needs a conga line yeah. that we have to have this gimmick? You know, at least put him over. Like if you're gonna bring him out every week to do well, that, or explain it. There's no explanation of any and like, okay, this person left NXT. Why is he here? Why is she there? Put him in a 24 seven championship what run <laughs> at least. Like, you know what I mean? Like. That's just, a whole other conversation. This about. person's been. Pr- well, remember the. Um, I forget what show it was, but they called up. Uh, I think it was Gargano. They called up like six people from NXT. Oh, yeah, well, they had already called up six. They, that's when they, they called up EC3 and. Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet and yeah, all that. Yeah. And then, like, two. Like, right before WrestleMania, they br- they say, we're bringing up Champa, we're bringing up Gargano, we're bringing up uh, Ricochet and Aleister Black. But there's no, there was no explanation. They just showed up to a Raw. They showed up and, and like then they Paso didn't show up again. Or something. Yeah. And well, they did like two shows, I think, and then they didn't come back. And then Ricochet and Aleister, they 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 stay on the Still. roster. Gargano, uh, or Ciampa got hurt. So right, you know, right. He's off best the show. But it was the best thing that happened to him. Oh, of course. But now what happened is, is you already knew <laughs> they were going to bring DIY back. Mm-hmm. And the second he got hurt, that destroys that whole plan, which is why Gargano goes back to NXT, which is probably the best thing for him, too. Yep. Gargano was going to be pushed to nothing on, on the main roster. Yep. So. so one thing on our on our on one of our comments is, um, so Mark says, and I like how he puts this, NXT is a wrestling show that features wrestlers. Raw and SmackDown are episodic shows that happen to be about wrestling that feature superstars. I think that pretty much says it all. I mean, But it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, no. I'm, I'm just saying that's... That's the problem. That's how it is now, and that's, you know, that that's who's, just who's a superstar on Raw right now. None. Like who, who is someone on either roster that you look at and just think, that's a star. Like you're, you see them out in public, and you're like, holy cow. Well, like I, I was r- walking through the airport in Vancouver and walked right by the Miz and Kofi Kingston. My size, yeah, nondescript. I mean, like. They just blended in with the people. Nobody bothered them. Mm-hmm. Nobody talking to them. And it's just like, wow, these are two of the biggest guys in WWE, and not one person here cares. Right. Well, you would recognize who they are. You would, well, you would. I think you would. Re- some people would recognize them, but they're not like kind of like you mentioned. They're not. I have to meet them. They're not Rock. They're not Hogan. Right. They're not but Steve Austin. That's my thing, though. Like you talk about when you started wrestling, watching wrestling, or when we did. You look at a mid card guy walking through the airport in the mid nineties, late nineties, early two thousands. You're ever, you know, if it's Booker T or whoever, yeah, like, I would have been all about people it. People would have people like the physique, they the the, the way mm-hmm. they carried themselves. These are just two guys, just kind of. Mm, well, and I think maybe way. that's McMahon's mindset of like, hey, I need to build a superstar, and he needs to be, you know, muscular and huge, and it's like, it, it, it's. How do you want to look at it? Yeah. Like, I think you can have a superstar that's not big physique wise. I mean, oh, it, I mean, it, CM Punk, Daniel. I mean, exactly. You, you yeah. see the crazes that happen with with CM Punk or, or or Daniel Bryan, or you know, like you can do it. Even Adam Cole. You know, like there are guys that 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 aren't aren't that physique. Like, granted, you know, you've seen him push Roman Reigns and Seth but those Ron- guys did it on their own. 
they did it kind of against the company. It was, it was like an organic of, thing, they too. They didn't have a lot of help from the company, which is I I love the, the all the guys he's tried to push. I think they're talented. I love I love them. I think they're great. I think the storylines that they're giving is what pulls them back. You know, like this this Roman Reigns stuff right now. Roman Reigns should already have been in the title picture. <laughs> this guy, the guy beats cancer, comes back, and he's still like any other the, sport in the world. If you had you had a top athlete who has to take time away from the sport profession, whatever, because they have leukemia, and then come back, that that's that prints money right there. Like when Mario Lemieux came back from the non Hodgkin's Hodgkin lymphoma. It was the huge deal. It was huge news, huge deal. He comes back, and they just throw it so much, push it so much, and then, uh, like, after a month, it's just nothing because they just beat the horse to death. And it's like, right. all right, people are booing this guy already again. People want to see him lose because they just shove it down your throat, and they'll pick one guy to do it with. That, but that was the perfect time. Like, when he came back, that was the perfect time for a title push Yep, because they were behind him. You just spent all this time trying to get him – uh, over, they're booing the the guy. Yama John Cena got to that point too. You yep. know, they're booing the guy. That and they should they should have flipped. And the problem was though is they never made Reigns heel. They should have turned him heel. Oh, for six months, and then organically he would have got over as a baby. I mean, it, it's that simple. And the right. stubbornness and refusal refusal to do it. And look at Hogan. I mean, Hogan should be the prime example for all these guys that are lifelong baby faces like Cena, right? And Reigns. If you turn Cena heel. If you had, like, people were just, I forget what WrestleMania it was, just foaming at the mouth because there was the, that at the end of it. And he doesn't turn, but it was, it was like that set up to where he could have done it, could have done it, didn't do it. And they get, that would have gave Cena another. He wants to. Yeah. Just, he's, I, yeah he's said it several times. I, I want to. I, I, I want to do I that. I think it's a matter of time before they pull the trigger on it. And here's why he's been out of WWE long enough that. At least from because they they didn't do it at first because he's like he was their big merch seller. Mm-hmm. I don't know where he's at as far as merch sales now, but I mean he's been out for like he he didn't. So 2019 was the first year he did not have a pay per view match. I saw that. He's been out long enough to the point where I don't think it would hurt his merch sales. It, it might even drive them up. Just you know because re- wrestling is a cultural thing, and I think we're at a point now where. Heels are cool, kind of thing. Hogan's, I mean, look yeah. what they did for Hogan. Exactly. Match. So if you bring Cena back, turn him heel, like, I think fans would go crazy over that. I, I, I think it'd be cool. And it might spark his fire inside that he's doing something different and mm-hmm. you keep him around longer. Yeah, like exactly. Something well, new. I think it's clear he's done. I think you know they talked about a storyline for twenty twenty, probably towards WrestleMania. Um, but I think he's done. Here's the thing. I think they look at him like The Rock, though. They well, you think he's done on a full-time basis? I think he's done. You don't think, he, you I don't think, think he's ever having... next storyline, that he's going to do one more storyline. They would be smart to let him go ahead and break the record. I think, you know, he deserves that. I think he put a lot of time and energy into that product. To not let him break Rick Fla- Rick Flair's record would be wrong. It'd be awesome for him to do it on a heel basis um, to, to make that happen. But I think they look at him like The Rock now. It'd I think be great if he turned heel after he broke the record, right? Like he wins the belt and then turned heel, like or or, or does it all of you? You know, I yeah. did this. You know, you guys weren't behind me. And or does it at the same time? Yeah. Like if it's like a face versus face match mm-hmm. against you know whoever might be champion at the time, and you'd have to put the belt on somebody else, but um, pull out like you know his brass knucks from back in the day whenever he did his thug life gimmick and. Um, well, you notice every time he comes back now, he's got the Thug Life song playing. He's mm-hmm. got Word Life playing. It's, he's not, so my thing is, is like I, they look at him like The Rock, though. They they want him to be the guy that when he comes back, he gets the crowd going. Mm-hmm. You know, because The Rock comes back, he does his gimmick, and everyone goes nuts. He lets Becky Lynch or somebody rock with him. Mm-hmm. They get to beat up the guy that they're picking on, and it's over with. John Cena, last time he was back, he had a rap battle with the Usos, and then they beat up on and Rikishi. Came out, you know mm-hmm. the. Like it's almost like they're just using him to just get the crowd behind it, which is why they're bringing the word life gimmick back. That because John Cena can get over with doing a little yeah. funny rap thing than he can just trying to hype up the crowd and and support our military and, and you know yeah. like that gimmick's not working. So they're like, okay, let's bring word life back. So we got a forty five year old dude up here rapping 
you know, trying to act like a thug, but he's wearing with camo that, shorts. With that and great a, hair he has right, right. now. Like, <laughs> he, he's got like a Brad Pitt hairstyle, dressing like a you know a forty year old stepdad. Like, what it, if he came back as an Iranian sympathizer, like Sergeant <laughs> Slaughter did? <laughs> that might be pushing it. Just oh, a little. That would be you great. can't do those gimmicks anymore. No, but that would be awesome. But okay, to your point though, I a hundred percent agree. But he came back. Was it last year's Mania that he did that thing with Elias, or was it the year before? That was last year. That was yeah. last year. Uh-huh. People went crazy over that. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be silly. I, I agree that he's done full-time. I don't even think. I think at most he might do three more matches throughout his career, at, at the most. Right. Um, yeah, I, his, his acting career is not blowing up. It's like not. The Rock, no. Like The Rocks did. I'm sure he's all right financially. I mean, he, but he's he could though. Here's the th- he's joining he joined fast the fast family. He's gonna be in that last movie. Mm-hmm. That that there's always that movie that can rocket you. You know, the Rock mm-hmm. first you know probably ten movies didn't even really rocket him to what he is now. No, well, without a doubt, it just opened bad. doors for him to get into bigger franchises. You know, they've rumored John Cena being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC. You know, he's got that build. So mm-hmm. it's like it, it's just a matter of time before he finds that movie that just sends him over the top. Yeah, I agree. Um, Cool. Good stuff. Well, um, I'm going to do a quick plug about um, just our show about Yo Radio. Um, I wanted an excuse to play this soundbite, and Cole's heard this already, but T.O. will recognize this. Promotional consideration (laughs) paid for by the following. Good old Lord Alfred Hayes. I think I need to turn that that, uh, that little soundbite up next time I do it. Lord Alfred Hayes. Um, so, uh, again, thanks for everyone that's joining us currently. Thanks for everyone that's going to listen to us at a later date. You can check out the Going Broadway podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere that you can access your podcasting. And please check out our app, Yo Radio. You can download it from app, the App Store or Google Play. Uh, you can check out our podcast on the Lineup channel. It also has a diverse range of music stations of different genres so check it out again it's yo radio from the app store or google play you can also access it at radio uh, yo radio.com also wanted to plug our giveaways a little bit so once our facebook page hits um 250 and 500 likes we're going to be doing some free giveaways i'm not going to spoil on what we're giving away but uh, once we hit those numbers if you have liked our page, you could win something free. The only limit is none of us three can win, but anyone else is free game. It's a bummer. Well, Sorry. Yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> you're getting something for free anyway. I told you that yesterday. Oh, yeah. But um, then once we hit 1,000 likes, someone's going to win a real... Free trip to WrestleMania? Not quite. Oh, okay. Not quite. Oh, the travel package? Not quite. <laughs> will win a free, legit championship belt. With so, 24-7 rules, so I will come and pin you for it. It will not be a 24-7 oh. belt, Ooh. I promise. <laughs> but um, 48-7. 24-7. How, how does he say that? 24-7. It's 48-7, or it's 48-7, 7 11, that, That's it. European Intercontinental yeah. Heavyweight 24-7 champ. That's the silliest gimmick, but it's crazy it how much it's R-Truth, gone over. Our truth makes that belt. That's why they won't take it off. He's of done it. well with it. Okay, so let's take. So we've probably got about fifteen more minutes, give or take ish. Um, let's talk about that first. We'll just kind of spit spitball some um, some topics real quick. So thoughts on the twenty four seven title and that gimmick and how it's gone over. That's just a perfect mid card thing. Just something. On it's the a show. time filler. I I, I love on it. a three hour show. You know, I love exactly. It. I love it because it, it. I mean, our loves our truth. Our you gotta understand. Our truth's what fifty, close to. Let's let's he, use the Google machine. He, says, he's keep he's absolutely the perfect thing you want to bring that comedic mm-hmm. relief. Um, he's still talented enough. He's still agile mm-hmm. enough to put on an okay match. He is forty seven years old. Forty seven. Okay, so like, dude's up there in age. He still looks great. He looks young. He can still put on a match, you know. Not, I'm not and saying they love him. The, the apparently, crowd goes everybody nuts. loves him at the company, though. Mm-hmm. They say he'll have a job for life. Oh, Vince apparently. McMahon is like one of his biggest backers. He's yeah. perfect. I mean, he came in WWE way too late, way too late. Yep. Okay, um, 
his gimmick is perfect for what WWE wants to do, especially on a Monday Night Raw type setting. Um, what what he's doing with the twenty four seven belt is great because it does bring um, notice to the Singh brothers and <laughs> you know Drake Maverick. Like it allows those guys to get like fifteen seconds. Of it gives them TV time, yeah. Which so, is so which they is their great. Paycheck. Which is great. I love our truth because he's so funny in those segments, though. Like the. I don't mind that segment because our truth's in it. Now, if you take our truth away from it, I think the twenty four twenty four seven belt is absolutely terrible. Like it, like they they pushed it at first, like this was gonna be some serious belt. And mm-hmm. I remember talking to you about it and saying, "Yeah, I hate it. Like I think that's so dumb. It's like the hardcore championship belt all over again. 100%, yeah. And it's like that's why Mick Foley, you know, introduced it. But like I'm like, it doesn't it doesn't really fit the product now." But then when you have our truths chasing Santa Claus down the street and Santa Claus is like out of breath and you know like those kind of or you know you get celebrities involved too you know you and got, it's allowing them to do some stuff online with it with different segments on well you know, even YouTube. city to city there yep. you got videos of them in the big apple or or this place and you know he's getting pinned by you know some race car driver or yep. that's know. what so that's what I was going to say side topic what do you guys think of the fact that they will actually have Non WWE talent win it. That's all right with me. You know, like how many times for that have belt? Got... You know, I mean, it's. I don't think. I mean, I, 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 it's I, enough to. I'm kind of the same way. I'm just kind of indifferent about it. It's just like, like we've said, it's just a time filler for a three mm-hmm. hour show. But to their credit, they are doing it outside of shows. Like they're they'll mm-hmm. actually record little vignettes or whatever about. Two three minutes long of you know our truth getting pinned by somebody, but then a minute later, our truth pins whoever just beat him for whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I'm on the fence about it just because it's like you've got these guys that you're not using. Is that what well? You're well no, I was gonna say you got these guys that are being pinned via a roll up. And it works every time. I mean, it's the hardcore <laughs> championship. I, I, it's all over again. How many times do you see that belt change hands from a roll-up pin? But with the hardcore championship, you've got the element of someone to get whacked over the head from the from behind with a kendo stick or something like mm-hmm. that that makes it more legitimate. Right. I mean, at this point in time, the product's not there. You know, like you've seen some of those things happen where you know so and so got pushed into this or that happened. Yeah. Like, but the, for the you're most right part, with the roll-up. So I didn't even think about that. It's like the roll-up belt. I mean, how many <laughs> how many title changes? I, this would be an interesting stat to see if someone could look this up. How many twenty four seven title changes were not via a roll up? Like if someone legit got pinned or submitted or whatever, or if there was a match, like a real match. There's only been like three real matches for it. I, the cr- most crazy thing I've seen is when they had him get pinned when R Truth pinned somebody under the ring. Yeah, like they had the camera under the <laughs> yeah. ring. Like I thought that hey, that was actually pretty creative. It's inventive stuff like that that I think keeps it going. The fact that they do stuff like that, the fact that they do it outside of their shows that. I think that's what's keeping their audience. I think you've got some people that just absolutely love it. They, you know, that's their favorite part of the show. Well, which it's clean. That's the clean part of the show for the kid. You know what I mean? Like I that, exactly. That's like the it. part that's of this. Something the kids think are. That's funny. something that the kid can get behind, especially with our truth. I think they could do even more with it. I think they could actually put some great pro. Like I said, No Way Jose, his gimmick's the perfect kind of where the whole conga line maybe pins our truth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. Like it's something like that. Like you have so many things where where you know our truth could be going through the conga line trying to find the person he needs to pin. You know, like he could be hiding in the conga. Like there's so many things with those kind of gimmicks that like you could do. Right. And you know, right now you're not doing anything with Elias. You know, they put it on Elias when he was a heel, but with mm-hmm. as a face, you can have Elias like playing the guitar, singing about the twenty four seven championship. And, you know, like there's just things you can do with it that I feel like. Keeping our truth with it is great, but like mm-hmm. have him feud with people who are just as funny or just as creative, and it's not the Singh brothers, and he's calling them the twins. And well, you say Elias, <laughs> like uh, one of the things that we mentioned was Bray Wyatt and who goes over Bray Wyatt, kind of how you book him. Like it was something we talked about. We probably don't have time to do it, but the the end of that is who's the star that you put over Wyatt. More than anything, and that's actually the rub. That's actually one of the questions. Why I was, was going to kind of spitball a little bit, and actually, I was going to play this soundbite, and I totally forgot, but it totally goes with what we're what we're talking about. <laughs> they think they got the answers. I change the questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, change it up. So, I meant to play that before we went into the twenty four seven thing. So, let let let's go there. 
So Cole and I recently went to the AW Dynamite event in Champaign, and this is something we were talking about on the drive up there. With Wyatt, the Fiend, whatever, how do you take his title reign? How do you book it? Like, okay, let, let, let's phrase it this way. If WWE hired you today, we'll, we'll each take a stab at this, and then we'll probably have to wrap it up. We'll each take a stab at this. If WWE said, I want to hire you as the booker, and I'm going to put you on this uh, storyline, The Fiend is currently Universal Champion. How do you book it to where he eventually loses the title? And don't, like, you can't, you can't cop out and just have him lose it in like a three way, uh, like a triple threat match or a four way match or whatever. Like he has to, it has to be a one on one match. Who do you pick to beat him and win? So have you seen what they're doing with the people he beats? They're going back to like their old gimmick, right? Kind of. Well, mm -hmm. Miz is reuniting with uh, Morrison. Morrison so, now. Supposedly, yeah. So like, yeah. it's another another thing that's leaning that way. Um, They've had him wrestle as not the fiend. They had him wrestle as, you know, the Firefly Funhouse. I think you have him lose. If if you do lose, you have the belt come off that character. You don't you 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 protect the fiend, like they protected Balor in his gimmick. Mm -hmm. You book him like the Undertaker. You he does not lose. He does not. If if he does lose, it's because he's lost it. He doesn't need a clean pen. He like you keep that strong because that's money for years mm -hmm. with the merchandise, the mask. It's something for him to do. So eventually, you gotta have a, you have to have him lose because eventually the Undertaker lost. Also, I mean, granted, I think if you don't count house shows, whenever he debuted, I think Hogan, ironically enough, pinned him via a roll up. Um, but then after that. I, and I, I don't think that was a clean win either. I think he got, like, ash thrown in his eyes or something, something like that. Anyway, it's a little too far back. I, I just me. think you keep the Fiend gimmick as rock solid and strong True, as possible. But eventually he's going to have to lose. Like, you can't have... The, and that's the question. Who, who who do you want to get the huge rub off of that? Mm -hmm. who, who Who's a handful of guys that you could see do it? And you look at Strowman, Elias. No. No. I'm just saying, like, but who's it going to be if it's not something? Exactly. Is it is it uh, Drew McIntyre who they're huge on? Maybe because um, they're already looking at turning him babyface right now. So Getting I mean, there. Like, there's not a lot of guys that you can really okay you can go after. So I I don't know who that is. That's why. So I'm asking, what I'm do you think? So I I have two scenarios. I I can see it going one of two ways. One, you book it kind of like how they had Booker Ter or, or, or uh, Undertaker lose things. Uh, they buried alive matches. You know, where where he, he didn't get pinned, he didn't lose, he just went in the casket, they open the casket, he disappears. Mm -hmm. I've, I mentioned this to you. What if Bray White or, or, or The Fiend surrenders the belt, like, to mess with Seth? You know, like, mm -hmm. the whole storyline with Seth was he almost acted like he didn't even want the belt. Mm -hmm. He was more worried about messing with Seth Rollins. And so, like, what if you could pick any star? I mean, you could let it, even a face. You could put it on another face. Let's say it's Roman Reigns, just for argument's sake. Is they really want the belt on him, especially being on SmackDown, Fox. They want it on Roman Reigns. They they have this two month, three month long feud at a big pay per view. At randomly, they're saying that's Mania is going to be those two. Mm -hmm. Literally, you could have it to where they're fighting. The Fiends like destroying him, and then out of nowhere, uh, the the lights go off. It comes back on, and uh, the, when the lights come back on, Roman Reigns is on top of him, pinned, mm -hmm. over with. Uh, so I could see that scenario. I could also see um, one where they just uh, organically raise somebody up to be the anomaly that wins that match, or you know, because you have those Rey Mysterios, you know, where Rey Mysterio won the Royal Rumble. He came in. He, there was no way he was going to win the belt at WrestleMania, and then he wins the belt. You had the Daniel Bryan who the came Kofi in, King, just the something that's out of like something a hot that, shot thing out of nowhere that builds. And it doesn't even have to be a little man. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be someone who's just like, oh my god, that's so unbelievable. You know, I talked to to Alex about you have someone like Aleister Black who has the same kind of like mysterious mm -hmm. demeanor to where you could raise black up yep. you could you could get him to that place to where like you know he comes out and 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 uh, 
beats him, it doesn't have to be a wash, but like there's enough mind games that can be played mm-hmm. there. Um, there are other guys, you know, there's always the Seth Rollins who destroyed Brock. Let you know, what I mean, like even if it wasn't clean, he found a way to beat Brock. You know, they, they almost set the Ballard feud up too, to where he could come back as the demon. Yeah, I, but I feel like they, they've desensitized that story, that like that character. Like yeah, the demon's true. not near as what it was the first time he came out as that. Um, I even think like Adam Cole or someone like that that you could bring up from NXT. You almost have to organically build somebody up if you're going to have a clean win where someone's going to beat him, pin him, and it be over with. I do like the scenario where Bray Wyatt loses it versus The Fiend. But at the same time, WWE likes a overcomer story. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm almost shocked they haven't done it with Daniel Bryan. It wouldn't be shocked if they do it with Daniel Bryan. With this new, you know, shave the beard, yeah, kind of mentality. Um, it, but I, like I shared with you, it's either you organically build somebody up, or you have to have him lose in a way that's like he chose to lose. You know, like he he puts himself in the casket, shuts the door because he's nuts. You know, like because the fiend is nuts. I mean, the dude mm-hmm. is. You could have him lose where like. And there's so many creative ways with that character, even more creative than The Undertaker. Undertaker was still pretty one lane, yeah. where dead man walking kind of thing, where uh, except for when he was riding a motorcycle and was like some biker gang dude. Right. Uh, other than that, like he, he was one lane. The Fiend is like, you can go so, I mean, he's a, a psychotic child host, blues yeah. clues, but not, you know, they're talking about bringing the Wyatt family back with him. Um, you could even have Eric Rowan or Braun Strowman or somebody go Wyatt family on him. I even told you you could bring Matt Hardy back, even though he's not near the talented of wrestler. He's so his character's so weird and creepy enough mm-hmm. that you could have him pin him in the lake of whatever. Yeah. The, the Hardy compound, you know, that storyline was great. No one understood it, you know. But you could have someone like that organically mm-hmm. have the fan base to be like, I'm not mad about this. And yeah. still not lose the fiends. I agree. Either. I think you need to have it be. You, you need to build up somebody to 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 do it. Like whether it's Drew McIntyre, whether it's. Um, but it can't know. be Seth. It can't be no, Roman. No, it no, no. It's, it's got to be someone new. It's it got to yes. be a new. It cannot I mean, be. Here's the thing. They're huge on Baron Corbin. And no. if and if you're, fiend, if you're wanting to keep the fiend, if you're wanting to keep the fiend alive, as a face. You take the worst possible case of somebody who is just going to tick the fiends off. So if Baron Corbin goes in, especially with this King Corbin gimmick, and beats the fiend, even though like us, we'll be mad about it. It's going to do exactly what, what I don't think he has real heat. I think he has go away heat. I think people just think he sucks and he's awful. Like I, I the problem know. is he's got a lot of backers in the company from management oh, to yeah, talent i just that, don't get it i don't either i i, I he, don't either he's so bad on the mic that people hate him i he he literally is the guy that he can go out there say nothing and they'll boo the freak out of him like like th- that's just what they do and that's yeah. what i'm saying you can find a guy that can get over that but i mean Ke- kevin owens could be that guy too i could get over that bad if i went out there and stumbled over words and just said nonsensical stuff right. and acted I, I, I mean he almost acts like the like the fifth grade bully i yeah. mean he, he just okay so let, let's let's say let, let's pick out three guys. So let's say Drew McIntyre. We'll say Kevin Owens. I'm gonna say Kevin. Let's Owens. say Adam Cole. I I, I said that I, you know I said mm-hmm. you could almost bring an NXT guy up. I mean you could bring up someone from NXT or even Champa because he's kind of got more of the like the psychotic stuff going also to some degree. What about I mean, uh, Keith Lee, the big guy? Keith Lee. Or, I, no. I love Keith Lee. You have a you you would have to start like. Now it'd be a, it'd be a long He's build. Still too far away from the build that he needs fan base wise to go up against someone like that. Adam Cole, you what can what use about the, Riddle or uh, Donovan. Those two. I, I like Matt Riddle. Donovan Don, Dijakovic's not near close to me. I think he stumbles a lot in NXT. I think there's a lot of move sets that aren't there. Um, which Riddle I, has the legit tough guy thing with being a UF. I mean, like there's stuff that you could play into further with him right. than having. Right. Definitely. I just think I, I I I like the idea. I just something about I can't put my finger on. If you've got Riddle and the Fiend, it just like to me. I mean, I guess it you doesn't could, sound like a main event card yet. Well, it's not. Well, me. you could build it that way. I guess what I'm getting at is, it to me, it almost you'd almost have to do this. It have to be a long build. 
and you'd almost have to play it off as like this David versus Goliath type of thing, um, which could get over or it could just simply fall f- flat. Well, and I said that too. You almost have to pick someone who's the underdog that you just don't think that it's not transparent to that you just don't know, right? Like, oh, he's gonna do it. Like, right, he's gonna win. Well, especially when you've had people like Finn Balor lose to him, like Seth Rollins lose. Yep. Like they built him in a way that right off the back he's beaten so many big names and he's also just tormented so many legends. Like you, you have to have someone like I mean, you could even do it with Randy Orton and bring back his legend killer. You know, kind of. Get, like there are mm-hmm. gimmicks that you can go back to. You can't, but here's the thing: you can't have John Cena come in and and do it. No, I mean, oh man. I think people. I think people, I think people are over the whole like a, a, a an already established star ending some kind of a title reign or a streak. Like in in, in in high, that's an interesting one. Did he so, get over enough to where you know, now maybe he's so likable. I mean, like he gets everything over. He does, and it, they just. He's the closest thing they have right now to something organic that is currently going on that they could build off of. But no, they want to put him in this stupid wedding storyline. This, this is garbage. literally they're, they're taking this this wedding thing all the way to WrestleMania. So oh yeah, but it's after, a given. But after that, wow. you know, now it's going to be built in a way because they're going to put Lana back with them. I mean, they're legitimately married in real life. That gimmick can only go so far. I mean, you can even bring back. Here's the thing: you can bring back Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's scheduled to come back at some point. He he's a star that can always get over. And so you you just have to find the right mm-hmm. guy who can get it off of him, and then you can put it on whoever you want. But it's like, who do you pick? I like Kevin Owens as a heel. I I don't know if I would put him face versus Fiend as a face. You'd almost have to book him as a like a cool heel that the fans would get behind yeah. against the Fiend for it to work. I agree. What if Punk came back? Just a what if. As a not like a, I think Punk wants the one off matches though. I don't uh, think that's Punk, what I was gonna say. But w- would there be the heat if he beat him? If the fiend, if he beat the fiend, no. Yeah. I think everyone would be nuts because it's CM Punk. I think CM Punk has that fan base. I was gonna say he gets he, he's the one guy that gets the pass of the guy that's already established and built. The problem is, is that he's not, not gonna stay around. No. So you, you well, were, and he's got nobody in higher ups that's gonna back him to do anything significant like he they might at best the most i could see punk doing if he came back and did a wrestlemania or came back would be a wrestlemania match against undertaker it was like a rematch kind of thing i think that's the most prominent position they would put him in they're, they're, Triple they're, H. they're teasing this uh seth rollins cm punk match at wrestlemania which could very well happen I mean, you also got to think you can do factions too you can mm-hmm. have that that's why the adam cole thing really interests me because you could have the, that that faction come in and help him win the belt. Mm-hmm. You know, too many distractions can become the. You could do it with AJ Styles. I mean, AJ Styles has the OC. The OC can help him win. Um, th- there are plenty of factions. Even Seth Rollins w- with the heel thing. AOP comes in, beats the living tar out of you know Bray Wyatt or the Fiend, and so it's kind of like what they did. I think it was Sheamus. Sheamus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy! I was gonna say I think that's kind of what the, they did. The week of the awful comebacks. <laughs> no, no kidding. I think that's kind of what they did with Undertaker back. I mean, I don't. I'm trying to remember. This was '92, I think, Royal Rumble, where they had Yokozuna and Undertaker in a casket match. I think they. That's, I'm pretty sure that was. I think it's correct. If anyone's watching live, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think they just had a bunch of heels just inexplicably come out and help Yokozuna beat down the Undertaker so much that they got him in the casket, and then that was that was the end of the match. Right. So you, you could do that again, and I think it would work from the standpoint of, you know, they haven't really done it recently. If it's if it's some kind of gimmick match or if it's like a no DQ, you know, I, you could probably do something like that. I guess I'm just – I was trying to think of a scenario in which – Somebody, just one person, that WWE would say, okay, we're going to give you the rub on this, we're going to put you over, and we're going to put you over clean. Who's the one person that just, if you could say one person, like without giving a scenario, without giving a, you know, a storyline, who's the one person that you could see WWE doing that with? That's tough, man. Um, uh, they they love Drew McIntyre. That that's who I was thinking. They love him. Drew McIntyre is my vote. I I would say if I had to, if I had to pick a close second, they would possibly consider doing it with Adam Cole because I know Triple H is big on him. 
So is Shawn Michaels, by the way. I think they want to keep those guys in NXT. Oh, I agree. Little, I agree. I'm just, baby. I'm just saying a what if scenario. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say Kevin Owens, and it's because Kevin Owens, to me, you already just started building Drew McIntyre to be in a face. Kevin Owens is the guy that can switch from baby face to to heel in yeah. a matter of seconds. Drew McIntyre is a slow build either way you go. Yeah. So let's do one more, and then we'll we'll wrap this up. So. Wrestle Kingdom this year, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Wrestle Kingdom, they had it over the span of a two-day event this year. First time they've done that. With WrestleMania, if you count the pre-show being like, what, eight hours of content in a single night? Not to mention the fact that it's the last event of WrestleMania week. Should they consider WrestleMania going to a two-night event? So aren't they doing it this way this year? They're starting Wednesday with NXT. It's usually uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I know, but they, but but SmackDown's on Friday now. I know they're doing something right. different this year. I yeah, just don't they, remember what it is. I thought it was Wednesday, then something Thursday, SmackDown Friday, Takeover Saturday, WrestleMania Sunday. You're probably looking at Raw the, Monday. The Hall of Fame ceremony being on Wednesday or on, on Thursday. Thursday I think is what it was. So I, I mean, Wrestle WrestleMania is uh, 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 an experience, though. I don't think you can even there's I don't think there's even a way to make it a two day thing, because they're so adamant on you go and look at the travel packages. The travel package includes the the Hall of Fame ceremony. Mm-hmm. It'll include those SmackDown tickets on Friday. It'll include takeover tickets. It's gonna include the WWE WrestleMania, mm-hmm. the pre show, and then it usually includes the Raw the, the next the night, following yep, yep. night. Which is almost the second day of WrestleMania because people It's all rematches pretty much. And the, but they love it. Like it's when the new people that, show up on that, the roster. That's the, that's by far the hottest Raw of the year. Yeah. Well, it's still in the same city usually too. It's usually still there. Right. Yep. The hype's still there. Everything that just happened because it's the biggest show of the year. I just don't think there's a way. Now, I think they could get away from doing so many matches and putting on better matches. See, that's what I was going to say. Do you either make it a two-night thing or do you just say, okay, we're not going to have eight hours of content. We'll just trim it down to like five. You could have done that back in the day, but now they're worried about everyone getting that payday. That's why they do the Battle Royals. They, they get everybody on the card. Which is great. I mean, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, I almost think you could do that. Like, why not do that on a different night? You know what I mean? Like, why not make that? You almost get, with NXT not no longer being the C-show and it being just this, why not make TakeOver be like the, where we do the Andre battle thing and anybody can show up? And, you know, because there's, there, you don't have That's to have That's what's happened in, in the other years. NXT guys have been on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. NXT can show up in Royal Rumbles and everything else mm-hmm. and, and it not be a big thing. Well, supposedly NXT, from what I've read, is going to have a much, much larger presence at, at WrestleMania this year. Well, yeah. they have to. They well, have aren't to. they saying at Royal Rumble there's going to be 10 NXT? 10 each. 10 each. All, ten, yeah, ten each. Yeah. Which I think I think they need to have nine each and still have like the surprise that kills it if there's no surprise. Well, here's the thing: they say it's ten each, but one of those ten from SmackDown could be that surprise weirdo, you know, like Doink the Clown, yeah. or you know, what I mean, like it, it, technically you, somehow yeah. Doink is still mentioned on a show that you and I do, and it's like the streak continues. Right. <laughs> right. But like, it, it's just always like that, right? Like they always have a goofy, yep. and that's the closest entrance. cartoon that you have from back in the day, so it's easy to. Go back to Doink. Ever would always mention Doink. It's just this right. I mean, because it, it's, it's such a weird gimmick. But, yeah, I, I think WrestleMania is such a thing that you, you can't change their setup because of how many things they do. I mean, it's a it's a tour. They set up a whole, like, like exhibit that you go through when you're there. You know what I mean? It, it's not just like you show up, here's the event. Like, it, you're talking about you go, you get to walk around their their wax museum, you know, like whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Like, it, it's this, it's an experience. It, right. it, Wrestle Kingdom is all about wrestling. It, it, it's it's a two day event of just straight pure wrestling. It, it, it's it's organic. It's great. But WWE is not pushing that. They're pushing more of a come experience the Six a Flags yeah. Disney yeah. World journey so and so and that's that's what i was going to kind of equate it to so let's say you go to disney world whether you're with um no one goes to disney world by themselves let's say you're with your friends or with your family let's add something to it let's say you go with your family and you take your kids with you Mm -hmm. disney world what happens by day five you're done you're ready to go home right that's why everybody's done by the middle of wrestlemania exactly so I think they need to do one of two things as far as WrestleMania goes. I I was kind of just 
spitballing the idea of moving it to a two-day event because Wrestle Kingdom did. I agree with you. I do not think they should do that. But I think they drastically, for better or for worse, when it comes to wrestler paydays, they need to trim that show down by, like, by trim, like half. They need to trim that roster down regardless. Yeah. There are well, so many people getting paid that don't do anything right now. Well, and part of their part of their issue is they just don't want people jumping to AEW yeah. or you know whatever, which I can understand. I get it. But like at There's this nobody point, nobody that could leave that would move the needle, in my opinion. That's that's the one thing. Now, they they could let certain the, the the lower level talent they could leave and it wouldn't really affect them. Yeah. You know, even here's the thing, like Luke Harper going to AEW, it doesn't really affect them. It doesn't do that wouldn't do anything. He's for me. great. I love him. I hope he goes to AEW and that all happens. What about the uh, the the tag, the revival? Like if they went there, it does nothing. Like I don't I don't know why they've been so worried. For the m- most part, I don't think it does anything, but for the people that would follow being the elite show, you know, they had their thing back in the earlier episodes where they would do the whole FTR gimmick mm-hmm. and, you know, F the revival, whatever. Um, so there would be that aspect of it, but I think that would even die out pretty quick. I mean, maybe after, you know. Well, AEW's th- tag team division's on the map, mm-hmm. where WWE doesn't really have, they should. They have so many great tag teams. But they're not on the map. They don't push it. Where AEW is like, let's let's do this. Well, part of the problem is WWE doesn't know how to book tag team matches from what it seems. Yeah. Like, the, their, their tag team matches are just one big cluster. I, like, I mean, you guys watched the one last night, the the, the triple threat. I mean, like, the, you had the Viking Raiders, the Street Profits, and the OC in a tag match that should have been way more exciting than what it was. Having having them win off a, top, a 300-pound guy jumping off the top rope to win, I was like, no. Like, there's so many like the fact that we haven't had a Viking Raiders AOP tag match on Raw yet is just blows my mind. Well, I think they're probably going to save that for a WrestleMania they or better. something like that. <laughs> That's yeah. all I'm saying. But um, so I think what we're going to do is we'll save the um, talent jumping ship for another for another show. As far as you know, if someone should jump from AEW to WWE or that's a whole show WWE to <laughs> AEW. A whole show. So maybe we'll talk about that next week. Maybe that'll be our, maybe that'll be our topic next week. Um, just as far as guys that are in AEW or even we'll, we'll throw a new Japan in if they should jump elsewhere. Like if we'll, we'll kind of do like a, a triple threat of sorts, we'll do WWE, AEW and new Japan. Whose careers could benefit and why you got to slash ROH. H-O-H. Yeah. Because we can throw we can th- we can throw you we, we can R-O-H throw Ring of Honor in there. Guys in there. We'll we'll throw Ring of Honor in there. So, um, I'm bringing the list. Final <laughs> final thoughts at all. I'm just glad we're doing this. You know. Yeah, and this this is usually when things start to pick up this time of year. You know, you start you start getting to WrestleMania, Rumble, season, and Mania. Yeah. It, it's and it's it's the build. I will say because there is so much wrestling content out there for at least for me personally it just feels different this year not in a good or a bad way necessarily it's just like you know i think we'll see, to your point though with what you're saying i think we'll see more from AEW i think they were just trying to get through the year get their feet underneath them i think that you're really going to see them open up and oh, yeah. really try to they're just teasing build, stuff right and, now exactly yeah I they're just teasing stuff here. right now all right well on that note We want to thank everybody that joined us this week. For Alex, myself, for Cole, for T.O., we're going to give you a little send-off from Kenny Omega himself. We'll see you next week. Podcast was a presentation of lightupmedia.fm. Yeah, great show, guys. That was great for for an introduction show. I think uh, I like that. We can just.